Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of March 11th. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being televised. It's on live TV right now, and you'll be able to watch it on uh, cable or upon demand on ECAT online if you'd like. So um, the first order of business that we have is the swearing in of three new firefighters and paramedic, um, and one paramedics lieutenant. and one lieutenant. Chief? <coughs> Good evening to the board and town administrator. Always happy to come in and see you for this occasion. So it's always, it's always a good opportunity for the department to introduce new members and of course to swear in a new officer on the department. So <clears throat> first I would like to start um, with um, just announcing that we received our newest fire engine in town. Um, it's, it's out front so the board had the opportunity to see it. Um, very nice truck, it'll add um, to the uh, great work that our guys do, it'll give them a nice piece of equipment uh, to be able to respond and, and uh, retire the antique that we have. So that's great. Um, Congratulations on that. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, so the three individuals that um, I'd like to introduce uh, will bring our department to our full allotment of personnel, 40 on uh, shifts, so 10 per group. Uh, so once they complete their academy training in the fall, uh, we'll be at full staffing and hopefully, knock on wood, we're going to be there for a little while. So I'm very happy about that. So um, first I'd like to introduce Kars Brown. Come forward. Uh, Kars resides in the town of Hanson. He's worked for the Brewster Ambulance uh, for four years as a paramedic in EMT. Um, after receiving his paramedic license in August of 2018, um, he uh, continues with Brewster um, and has joined uh, the Eastern Fire Department. Um, Matt Ingino is next. Uh, Matt resides in the town of Rockland. He holds an associate's degree in fire science. Uh, prior to joining Eastern Fire Department, he worked for the Brewster Ambulance um, for four, e four years. Um, first as an EMT and then uh, when obtaining his paramedic license in October of this past year. And the third is Antonio Ioannidis. Antonio resides in the city of Taunton. He also holds an associate's degree in fire science. Uh, he worked for three years as a volunteer firefighter in the state of Vermont. Uh, he received his paramedic license in October of 2018 um, and previously worked on the on Forova EMS and the Brewster Ambulance before joining the Eastern Fire Department. So I'd ask uh, town clerk uh, to come forward and swear them in. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. And affirm. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a firefighter. As a firefighter. For the town of Easton. For the town of Easton. And to do so. And to do so. In accordance with the bylaws. In accordance with the bylaws of the town of Easton, of the town of Easton, and the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations uh, to all three of you. Uh, we wish you a very happy and uh, successful career here in Easton. Next, I'd like to introduce Jason Healy, who's being sworn in as our newest lieutenant on the department. Uh, Jason resides in the town of Norton and has been a member of the Easton Fire Department since May of 2015. Before joining Easton, he worked for East Care in Boston and Brewster Ambulance in Middleborough. Jason holds a bachelor's degree in international relations from the very own Stonehill College and a master's degree in emergency management from Anna Maria. Jason has completed several additional trainings, including Fire Officer 1 and 2, Fire Prevention Officer, 
basic and fire prevention officer one, fire instructor one, and fire instructor two. He's been very busy since he's been here in Easton. <laughs> he has received the American Red Cross Hero Award, uh, the Norfolk County Fire Chiefs Association Life Saving Medal, and Easton School Committee Certificate of Appreciation and Certificate of Appreciation from Boston EMS for care rendered during the Boston Marathon. So at this time, I'd like to uh, ask Danielle Sicotten if she would swear in Lieutenant Healy. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Jason Healy. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a lieutenant. As a lieutenant. For the fire department. For the fire department. And to do so in accordance. And to do so in accordance. With the bylaws of the town of Easton. The bylaws of the town of Easton. And the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So help me God. And so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to introduce his uncle, John Healy, who's a retired lieutenant from Boston EMS. He's been in, been in his back. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks for what you did. Congratulations, Chief. Slide. Uh, and next, the chief will talk about recognition of the Bristol North EMS Council Exceptional Response Award to the Eastern Fire Department Group 2. Thank you. Um, in February, I was um, delighted to be able to attend the Bristol Norfolk EMS uh, annual uh, training conference and meeting. Um, and at that time, they give out awards uh, to individuals and to departments for uh, various things. Um, and Easton, each of the hospitals within our region, um, one being the Good Samaritan out of Brockton, are eligible to nominate a department for a uh, significant uh, response to an incident. Um, and I'm very happy to say Easton was nominated and received the award. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to read the letter first and then I'll introduce the crew that was on that day and responded to the call. So, uh, dear Chief Partridge, Steward Good Samaritan Medical Center, in collaboration with the Bristol North EMS Council, wish to commend your department for the exemplary service provided on our mutual patient on December 16th, 2018. EMS is not only a necessary service that is vital to our community, it is the safety net for all of us. This safety net was put to the test on the afternoon of December 16th. On this otherwise quiet Sunday afternoon, the radio silence was broken by police calling for shots fired. This is the phrase that no first responder wants to hear. The response was immediate and your, crews, and your crew was on scene within three minutes, not knowing if they would be treating a perpetrator, bystander, or one of their own. Upon arrival, the crew found their patient uncooperative and at times combative with significant injury. Initial assessment showed the patient was already going into hemorrhagic shock from the lacerated artery. Your crew rushed into action. They were soon met by, on scene by Dr. Henry Crowley uh, and together they seamlessly gained control of the situation. Less than a week prior to the incident, I had the pleasure of participating in your department's EMS rounds. Ironically, the topic of the rounds that day was hemorrhagic control. We discussed topics such as tourniquets and TXA, but also identified areas where pre-hospital providers could influence outcomes of damage control resusc resuscitation surgery. Topics such as acidosis, coagula therapy, and hypothermia were discussed and it was concluded that operative success really begins on scene. I can say with tremendous pride that each and every dis discussion point um, from that meeting was addressed by the crew caring to the patient. They truly put what they learned into practice. There is no doubt that they saved the patient's life. So it is with great pleasure that I present the Exceptional Response Award in recognition to the Houston Fire Department 
ongoing commitment and care to the community. And at this time, I'd like to ask each of them to come forward. The members on the call of Group 2, Firefighter Paramedic Jeff Dupuy, Firefighter Paramedic James Baptiste, Matt Elaine, Bill Wolf, John White, Sean Goyette, Captain Riendo, Lieutenant John Carroll, and Dr. Henry Crowley. For their selfless efforts that day, you have our utmost respect and sincere thanks. And that was signed by Meredith Kennedy, who's the RN Trauma Program Manager, and Richard Paulson, Trauma Medical Director at the Good Samaritan. Um, I also would like to add my you know, sincere thanks to each of them for uh, their efforts that day. Um, it, I did hear the call, and it was one of those um, calls that put you right on the edge of your seat. And I'm sure during the response, um, there was some question, uh, but when they did arrive on scene, there was no question that they did everything they could in the right uh, patient care, which saved his life. So I congratulate them. If, uh, just so the board is aware, and I, I asked Dr. Crowley if he would come forward also. Dr. Crowley is our service medical director. We have a hospital medical director, and then we have one for just our department, and that's Dr. Crowley, Hank, as we like to call him. Uh, he does an awesome job for uh, Easton Fire Department. Um, he listens to the, to the scanner. When he hears we have something that he can help us out with, he's right there responding. Or if we feel we need him, we place a call to him. If he's available, he's right there, and I thank him very much for, for everything. So. You're very welcome, Chief. I just want to say something to the constituents of Easton. I've been involved in pre-hospital care now for the better part of 40 years, and I've seen and been involved with a lot of different departments, and I have to say that this department in the town of Easton and the people that this department employs, along with the leadership, is outstanding and you folks need to understand that the, the servants that you have here providing care both from the fire perspective and from the pre-hospital care health department is outstanding this award could have been offered for you know one of two thousand calls that i participated in with these folks over the years so this is just one that was chosen and i have to give kudos to the police department as well the police department here is an excellent police department and quite frankly the police department contributed to the survival of this patient immensely uh, they actually held direct pressure on this gentleman's wound and that was very integral in the survival of, of this patient. So I think from the leadership down, you folks have just a, an unbelievable fire department and it's an honor for me to participate and to continue to participate with them in providing the highest level of care uh, and service to the constituents of the town of Easton. So I thank you for that privilege. Thank you, Chief. to add that it's a very important to this board and to the community that the, uh, all of our first responders continue to get the training that they need to be able to be sure that we can keep them and the community safe on these types of calls and to outfit you with the equipment that you need so it's very appropriate that we have this come in tonight, the night of the new truck. And also, Chief, um, you're the first one to stand up and give congratulations to your team, but your leadership has really been um, just unmatched, and I really appreciate everything that you do to be a good leader for the team um, and to be a good role model. So thank you very much to you and the whole crew. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but I'm pretty sure you want to go out and uh, <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to take a couple of minutes while the room clears. And uh, thank, thank you for coming. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. <laughs>
You're not the Thank you. Yeah, I hope you Thank you. So next we have a one-day yeah. liquor license for the Ames Free Library Irish Pub at Quisit Fundraiser at the Quisit House, 51 Main Street, Northeastern. Uh, the Ames Free Library has applied for a one-day all-alcohol liquor license for an Irish Pub fundraiser at Quisit House um, to be held on March 16th, 2019 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. An Eastern police detail is not required for this event. Uh, we do not have Marion here to uh, talk about it. So I will just throw in um, a couple of comments on that. It's a very wildly successful event every year. It is an important fundraiser for the library. And if Marion was here, she would share that. So if Absolutely. somebody would like to um, make a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Next up, we have a contract award for Colonial Municipal Group for one 2019 Ford Explorer for the fire department. Sure, so uh, I believe the chief is busy in the hallway with the families of his new firefighters. Um, so I'm happy to just touch on this. There's a memo in your packet uh, that just briefly touches on this contract. It is for $39,923.60. Uh, it's for a 2019 Ford Explorer from the fire department. This was part of the approved capital budget uh, for um, the 2019 supplemental capital budget. Uh, I recommend your award. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to award the contract to Col Colonial Municipal Group for one for 2019 Explorer for the fire department not to exceed $39,923.60? No so that's Craig and Chuck. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Next is a contract amendment for a 524 Depot Street survey with civil design consultants. Sure, so attached in your packet is a memo from uh, the Assistant Planning Director, Andrea Langhauser, uh, requesting a, that the board approve an amendment uh, to a contract associated with field work out on uh, 524 Depot Street. As the board may recall, uh, I believe CPA funding was appropriated for this uh, uh, one or two town meetings ago in the amount of $48,000 to do some necessary wetlands delineation to provide the 524 Depot Street uh, planning teams uh, with the information they need to kind of take a look at that property and think about what, uh, what recreational uh, preservation and, and, and other uses that property could have for the community in the future. Uh, there was a base contract for some of that work. Um, uh, $5,500, uh, and there is now an amendment for additional work that remains to be done, the amount of $27,417. That'll bring the amended contract of $32,917.10, which is still within the, uh, well within the $48,000 appropriation. I recommend your award. Uh, Assistant Plan Director Langhauser is here if you do have any specific questions about that. Anybody have any questions? I do not. And what will this culminate in a report that's available? Is that how it comes back to us? Thank you, Mr. The, um, the surveys, surveyors will give us a plan with the, all the wetland lines marked on it. And, and I don't know that it'll be a report per se, but, um, but it'll be a plan, a survey plan. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So they'll mark all of the wetland areas so we, we know exactly where they are. Right. We had two contracts under for this project. We had the uh, wetland biologist do his work. And um, he's completed on uh, within his budget. And um, there'll be a report for that. But he had so many flags that he, um, he uh, we need more survey work done. Any other questions? So if somebody would like to make a motion to, um, to okay. approve the contract amendment for 524 Depot Street Survey with civil design consultants in an amount not to exceed 27,417, 10? Uh, I, I would actually so recommend the, the yes, I would recommend the entire contract amount, which is the 32,917. Okay. Not to exceed 32,9,17,10. So moved. Second. That's Tom and Craig. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next.
Next up is the annual town meeting warrant review. Sure, thank you. So um, contrary to the snow that's still on the ground, uh, we're heading into spring and uh, town meeting season. This is the first draft of the annual town meeting warrant. Annual town meeting will be uh, Monday, May 20th at 7 p.m. in the Oliver Rooms High School. Uh, we have a handful of articles uh, for the board to consider, including and uh, possibly also recommending tonight. Um, many of these are uh, relatively standard articles that are uh, uh, included in each annual town meeting warrant, uh, and I'll speak to those uh, briefly now. So the first article uh, is for the acceptance of annual reports. This is a boilerplate article every year. The uh, warrant includes the acceptance of the town uh, annual report, which is compiled by our office uh, and made available by town meeting. Do you want us to um, vote to include and recommend these as you go through them? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So for this, I would ask that you vote to include and recommend. So would somebody like to make a motion to include and recommend Article 1? So moved. Second. So that's Craig and Tom. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Article 2, again, uh, standard uh, article on each annual town meeting warrant, the spending limits for revolving funds. Uh, town meeting has to set the limit on these revolving fund accounts. Um, these numbers have been uh, verified by the finance director. I recommend your inclusion of recommendation. Are these consistent? With, there's no changes in them, or are they changed? I do not believe that there is any change from last year, but if you give me two moments, I can pull that up and confirm that for you. Dottie, if you would like, you can move on to the third article while I get the information on that or whatever your preference sure. is. Uh, so the third article is elected officials compensation. Um, there is no change in that. And uh, from for as long as I've been on the board and before that, um, it's an annual article required by <coughs> statute to set the salary levels for all compensated elected officials. Second. That's Chuck and Craig, all in favor? Um, to include and recommend, correct? Yes. yes. Correct. Unanimous. Okay. Article 4. <coughs> um, appropriation and authorization to expend Chapter 90 funds. This is the town's annual share of the Chapter 90 funds provided by the state for road-related improvements in the community. Um, and if somebody would like to make a motion to include and recommend. Absolutely. So moved. Second. Craig and Chuck. Any questions? All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, back to Article 2. Uh, Craig's question, yes, the uh, appropriation totals are the same. No changes? So Given that, I make a motion to include and recommend Article 2 spending limits for revolving funds. Second. Tom and Craig, all in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, and we're at uh, five. Yeah, Article 5. So uh, this is, again, a standard article that is typically in your annual town meeting warrant. There are no bills uh, from a prior fiscal year at this time, but I do typically uh, ask that the board uh, consider voting to include, uh, just to me that, that something does arise between now and May 20th, that that's on the warrant. So no recommendation. No recommendation. recommendation. No. Correct. Please. Okay. OK. I make a motion to include, but not recommend at this time. Uh, Article 5, payment of bills from a prior fiscal year. Second. I, but I, I, do we want to we yeah, say you, we want to include and then period. don't comment on the recommendation? Otherwise, it looks like you're saying, but you we are, don't yeah. recommend. You're, yes, so you're affirmatively you saying we do not recommend. You I apologize. I take that back and recommend that we include Article 5, payment of bills from a prior fiscal year. Second. Well, that's Tom and Craig. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, and Article 6, Supplemental Fiscal Year 2019 Budget. Similar to Article 5, this is a standard uh, business article. We do not have anything specific yet for any sort of supplemental budgets for fiscal year 2019. Uh, we keep this on every uh, warrant in the event that there are any adjustments that do need to be made to the current fiscal year budget. So I would recommend that you include uh, this article, but not uh, obviously take a, a recommendation at this time. We don't have any of the information yet. So I'll move that uh, we include Article 6 on the Warren article. Second. That's Craig and Chuck. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Moving up to Article 13, the Septic Loan Program. Which is apparently being presented to you off of an iPhone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I wasn't being snarky. That's it's neat. <laughs> well done. Hundred year old room. Good nice. thinking. <laughs> So since I'm here, I figured it was a good time to kind of give you a little bit of a history and a background for anyone who doesn't know and a chance to promote the program that is run through the Board of Health Office known as the Septic Betterment Loan Program. Um, historically, this program came in in its current incantation back in, um, based on a annual town meeting article that was presented in 2011. At that time, we looked to borrow $200,000 to get the program rolling. We accepted our first application in January of 2012, and by the time you were asking for warrant articles for that annual town meeting, that $200,000 was gone. Um, we subsequently came back 2012, 13, and 14, each time asking for $1,000 um, in approval. A million, that, a million dollars. A million dollars, I'm sorry, a million dollars. Um, the last, we're working right now off of that um, 2014 authorized borrowing of a million dollars. So, so far, 244,000 of that has gone out the door. 220,000 of it is sitting as pre-approved loans that are under construction or under development right now. And that leaves us with $536,000 available at this time to be loaned out. So what I'm asking is that we go to this year's town meeting and um, authorize an additional million dollars. Um, one of the questions that gets often asked is how many loans does this represent? It represents 103 loans. And the other question that is most commonly asked of me is, well, what does it cost to put a septic system in and how does this shake out? So I did this quick little pie chart showing you that um, a good percentage of the loans end up being under 30,000, represented by the kind of olive green and teal green. Um, a good enough number, 15 or 16, I believe, with 16 of them um, fall in that 30,000 to $39,000. And then there are, his, there have been four loans that have gone over $40,000 in their amount. These, so far, there's $2.66 million that's already been dispersed to these 103 homeowners. The average number really doesn't mean a lot. The average loan is 23750 but as you can see from this, it really is all over the board. <clears throat> Kristen, does that include, so I think that's an a interesting data point. So this program, is this program limited to um, only complete system replacements, or these include just repairs to existing systems? So in order to qualify for one of these loans, sure. you have to have a septic system that is in failure. Okay and this is for the repair or replacement of a failed septic system. It could be just a component that is replaced. Just one piece. It could be one piece. Usually it's the most expensive piece, which is the leaching field. Okay. Um, oftentimes the tank can be salvaged. There are other pieces that can be salvaged, but most often this represents um, a complete. So, so that average, which is just shy of 24,000, is mm -hmm. not don't, wouldn't even cover an entire system. It's, it's a, typically pieces it, of a system. I don't have the data. I would say probably 75. Of, of the ones that fall in that under $30,000 range, probably 75 to 80,000 of them were a complete revamping. Adding the tank and a pump chamber to already existing parts, we're not talking about a six $7,000 um, sway on any of those. Um, oftentimes, because the way we determine groundwater is much different than when the systems were originally constructed, they aren't able to salvage the tank, or they're having to add a pump chamber after the tank in order to salvage it, just to get it up above where we determine the groundwater is now. <coughs> um, so I'm asking that we go back and authorize um, borrowing of an additional million dollars. Um, these loans do go out, as I said, to anybody who has a failed septic system. Um, there's two ways that this could be mitigated. One would be putting, an, as Connor mentioned, a brand new system on the property. The other way these loans can be used is they can be used to connect to an existing sewer system once it's available. And where we have the different projects coming online, I do anticipate that this may be um, another area where we're fulfilling a need, especially when we're looking at higher costs of taking things from the backyard to the front yard to dismantling old systems and doing it the right way. And um, does this give beneficial rates? Is that one of the attributes of the program? 
Yes, initially when we first started doing it, the first couple of rounds, um, the first three rounds were at 2%. We are obligated under statute to charge 2% over what we're being charged. Back with the rounds, the last $2 million end up being at 4%. But there's no credit check, there's no equity check. You just have to, anyone applying or approved for the program just has to be current in all their town bills. That's over um, how long a period of time? 20 years. 20 years. 20 years, and it appears on the tax bill with the February and the May um, billings. At what point would we want to consider whether or not this amount might meet the needs of the town for people who would be hooking into sewer in terms of the number of people that might come online, for example, at the Five Corners Sewer Project? Um, and I know that the timing of that is out next year, but uh, it feels like there will be an awful lot of people that will be impacted by that project, that giving them the opportunity to take advantage of beneficial rates would be in their interest and I think the community's interest. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess I'm asking is the million dollars enough now for this year and then we should be considerate next year of increasing that amount given the number of people that might be coming online to take advantage of the program. I think it's something that we watch very, very closely. If you notice, I haven't been back looking since 2014, and we do have $500,000 available. We're asking for the extra million on top of that just because we don't ever want to be in a position where we don't have the monies lined up. Mm -hmm. But I think we'd have an opportunity to reevaluate for special town meeting if we needed to. Um, and it is something that I'm watching, my office is watching, um, and we're keeping a close tab on as these newer projects start to come on board. We have not had anybody avail themselves of this loan program to tie into the downtown sewer district, the shovel, town, shovel shops, um, partly because the costs are low. Um, oftentimes it's, it's a straight gravity shot, and it has not, from what we've been told, been enough to make this worthwhile even going through the process. But as we get into other more um, involved projects, it very well may. And the condos is one um, situation that I do want to be prepared for. I've met with the homeowners association there and discussed some mechanisms whereby the individual homeowners may be able to avail themselves. And those may be small loans, but there may be multiple of them. Excellent. Chris, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your department working with council de uh, developed agreements with Board of Health for folks uh, anticipating sewers coming online. I think both in Quesit and in Five Corners, where if somebody has a Title V uh, failure, that because that public sewer is coming, they can have basically an agreement to tie into it when the sewer becomes available. Is that right? So th we have agreements not necessarily for that scenario. Title V does not prohibit a property from changing hands with a failed septic system. Title V says you have to do the inspection and it has to be fixed within two years. If that two year window is an issue, yes, we have an agreement for that. We also are working on preparing a letter that can be presented to borrowers and lenders that are laying out all of the steps involved and what Title V says and exactly what our anticipation is for the project. We do have agreements that um, are allowing in a process we've identified that is allowing for some changes in use in anticipation of the sewer coming along and for some in, um, some development and I'm not really sure the right word, but um, the example I would use as it boiled down to a um, residential property would be if they were um, looking to exceed the existing capacity of a septic system, somebody within one of the sewer districts that has a three bedroom home and the timing is right, what might keep them in their house is being able to put a fourth bedroom there, either in the form of an in-law apartment or a, a master up over the garage, but it exceeds the design criteria. We have identified a pathway and a set of agreements that we can allow for those types of changes to happen and work with homeowners as well as business owners to get to the next to higher level of flow um, in anticipation of the sewer coming down the road. That was what I was just going to ask you is if it was for homeowners as well as business owners. So yep. that's, thank you for clarifying that. And yep. sorry to re-ask this, but I want to be clear in case I have to speak on the issue. If So you do not have to have a failed septic system and you could still avail yourself of these funds, this mechanism to tie into the sewer. Your system does have to be in failure, but oftentimes when a close look is given, Failure doesn't mean necessarily mean it's boiling up out of the ground. It can be proximity to groundwater. It can be, uh, there are a lot of different factors. 
I would just encourage anybody who look, is looking to possibly do this to come talk to us. And if we go to the next slide, um, any questions, any does this apply to me, how can I utilize this, I would encourage anybody to reach out to the Board of Health. Um, our phone number is up there, we're also available on the web. Um, the Board of Health will be participating, um, as we often do, as we always do, during the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day. Uh, Board of Health staff has been historically at um, Frothingham Hall collecting sharps in, current, in containers. There's more information coming on that as well. But I've spoken with staff and we think it's a good opportunity for us to also hold some information sessions on this topic since my staff is going to be there anyway. So if anybody has specific questions and wants to talk to one of the two health agents, I encourage them to come on down to Frothingham Hall on Saturday, April 20th between 8.30 and 11.30. Mark Taylor and Tim Myers will both be there. They'll have applications, they'll have information available, and they can walk anybody through what might help them. Excellent. So April 20th is Hazardous Waste Day, too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? So um, are you recommending that, that we include and recommend? Yes. Someone like to make a motion to include and recommend Article 13. So moved. Second. Craig and Tom, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thanks so much. Job, that was very helpful, Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Okay, Article 14, rescind previously authorized debt. Sure. So uh, this is a housekeeping article. Um, this is an article to rescind a borrowing authorization from last town meeting, last annual town meeting, for $125,000 of borrowing relating to uh, some carbon vessels uh, at the northeastern village wastewater treatment plant. Uh, that funding is no longer needed to be acquired for borrowing. Our legislative delegation, uh, Representative Cronin, were able to secure funding for that through the state budget process last year. So we do not need that local appropriation. Um, so this is a, a housekeeping item to take, uh, take that off the books. With appreciation for the delegation of getting that uh, funded for us, uh, I recommend to include and recommend Article 14, rescinding previously authorized debt in the amount of $125,000. Second. So it's Tom and Chuck, all in favor? Unanimous. Great, thank you. Um, Article 18, acceptance of a deed in lieu of foreclosure. It's actually 18, 19, and 20 are all deed in lieu of foreclosure articles. Uh, Treasurer Collector Linda Hawks has submitted them. She's here to speak to these articles. How are we doing? So these are three lots that have been in tax title since um, 1991. Um, there, once I sort of got going on all the tax title stuff, um, I reached out to all of the people who have properties in tax title, including the owners of these three parcels. Um, and um, the, the owners have expressed an interest to deed the properties to us in lieu of foreclosure. Um, that's not a good thing in every case, but in these three cases, I think that it is smart. Of, it would be smart of us to do it if we could, if the town would accept it. Um, the first one, 11 Pebblebrook, is uh, 1,200 and is it 1,242 square feet. It's a little tiny piece of land that conveniently abuts town-owned land. We ha I think we have a water tank on, the on a parcel right behind it. Um, it was supposed to be um, transferred to the town when the development was done. And for one reason or another, it was not. And it went into tax title instead. And now we find ourselves here uh, with it in tax title. So we have a choice of either accepting the deed and calling it quits, and then the town owns it just like we would if we foreclosed the tax title. Um, and then we avoid having to pay th such costs as the petition to foreclose, which is $515, not to mention all the lawyer's fees that kind of go along with that. The land court itself charges could charge more than the $515. So. Um, that one is just a smart financial uh, proposition for us. It was supposed to happen and we just didn't do it. We or they, it's not, I don't, there's no blame assessed here. It just wasn't done. So just to be clear, this is just a little sliver of land. Yep. There's no house on it. Nope. There's, there's no dwelling or anything. 1,242 square feet in, in a small development. Okay. Any other questions? 
The, um, that's 11 Pebble Brook. Do you want me to do the other two while I'm at it? Sure. The uh, Nine Balsam and One Crab Apple are actually owned by the same person uh, who was a developer in that development at the time. Um, one lot is wet. The other lot, I suspect, is unbuildable for other reasons. Um, but the assessors, because there's no in evidence to the contrary, are still assessing them as buildable lots. They're both approximately a half of an acre. Um, there is an amount owed on these two properties. Each is approximately $150,000, give or take a little bit. At this time, that includes all the interest. Um, again, this is um, tax titles that have been there since to, um, 1991. It's a lot of years. The owner has come forward and said, I would deed them to you if you would take them. Um, at this stage, I think it would be smart and good if we could, um, only because, again, it's more money that we would have to spend. For tax titles, the money is all spent by the town, and then hopefully you can get it back when you, once you've foreclosed that lien have had an auction and then you get your money back. I don't think that's going to happen in this case and we might as well just cut our loss with these two. It's not going to happen in your estimation because of why, Linda? Get the money back? Yeah. I don't believe that these two half acre lots are worth more than $150,000 each, especially if there's a question about them being buildable. So we would take these back and they would just become... We would take them back and then I would auction them off. Um, they might have some limited value to an abutter, for instance, who just wanted a little bit more space. Um, whether they would, I mean, they're not going to um, spend, well, if I was an abutter, I wouldn't spend full market value or on a buildable lot. Uh, if they are actually buildable, then we sell them for whatever market value is. And maybe we could, but for $150,000, I don't know that we're going to get that money back. Any questions? And Linda, under the, I believe the board's own policy, any kind, some, any time uh, this action is being contemplated, this is distributed to all the different uh, departments and uh, staff boards and committees in town for right. three weeks for them to review and provide Correct. any comments back to you before it Correct. moves forward. So uh, that comment period is still open. So at this time, we would just be asking for the board to vote to include these, uh, and we'll have that feedback before you make a recommendation. Okay. Somebody, yeah. I guess I'm just trying to understand the dynamics. So a developer developed this area of properties. Mm -hmm. There seem to be two parcels, as I look at the map, that weren't developable. Or that or, weren't developed for one reason or another. Yep. Developed yep. for some reason, and the town's going to take responsibility for these properties. Um, yes. Well, yes. Bearing in mind that the normal process is now that we're in tax title and if they're not deeded back to the town um, I would petition the land court to foreclose them anyways so and then a year and a half or two after that the um, the tax lien is foreclosed and the town of Easton then owns them anyways I suspect we're going to own these in any event the only question is how much are we going to spend getting there to that same point and there's no, we believe there's no opportunity, and I apologize for not necessarily understanding all the nuances, but Sorry. there's no opportunity to get the 155000 and $154,000 paid back to us that is owed. The owner has said not. I mean, you could, we could uh, not do this, and then it goes back to the owner. And then we would have to go to land court yeah, and, I mean, I've been in be contact clear, with If we the went owner. to land court and the owner couldn't pay, then <clears throat> what land court would do is foreclose on it and give the property. Yeah, the right. payment by the land owner right now, it would only be if you could pay in full and just redeem this thing, release the, and get it, get it so that we can release the lien. They would have to pay it all in full. Mm -hmm. Even once we petition the land court, they could still do that. There's a couple little extra... Um, requirements from the owner at that point in time because the land court doesn't enjoy being asked to foreclose on something and then say no we don't we actually need you to do that um, but they could they technically could do that um, 
at this time because they are so old because there has been a number of um, we have reached out to the owner a number of times and they are not interested in paying do we foresee this happening like anymore um, I have a number of old tax titles that may or may not come up like this I, I I'm inclined to say n no, probably not, because I've reached out to all the owners, and these three have come forward. Um, I would be surprised if any others came sort of out of the woods because I've reached out a number of times and just haven't had any response. Um, my only reservation is that once we get this to a town meeting and it sort of becomes uh, public knowledge or not that this is not public knowledge this is but once it happens once maybe another person might say oh I didn't know I could do that maybe I maybe I would like to investigate that um, it, then it it's sounding like it can set some kind of precedent it wouldn't be a legal precedent no I think this is one of the many <clears throat> tools that the town has so Linda if you could can you just give an overview of some of the different methods that your office, either through the selectmen in town meeting or administratively when allowed, pursues tax titles? Because this is, your, your office also engages in tax title auctions, yes. is that right? And this is yes. something that in your time, since you have become treasurer, you review this every year yes. to try and make sure that we're on top of these. Yes. Uh, so we can auction uh, certain tax titles off, right? And in that case, somebody would purchase for rights to that lien on the property. Right. Why would you not <clears throat> necessarily consider this as something that would, why would this not be appropriate for auction? If there was um, a lot that clearly had a market value over and above what we were owed, I would not suggest that that is, would be an ideal lot. Um, these lots, I believe are really are too close to the market value to for us to invest any more money into them because it's all on us um, the legal work the petitions you know the filing of the forms um, so more current tax titles I don't anticipate this happening with at all because I do sell as many of the tax liens as I possibly can um, that's the best deal for the town is for me to take a property in tax title and then sell the lien. That is a good deal for the town. Right. Um, so those are the current tax titles. These are old, like these are 1991. These are old. Um, and a lot of times with the old, old tax titles, there are um, problems with the tax title. Either the tax title is invalid because the assessed owner was wrong or because there's an estate the assessed owner has since died and the heirs can't be found or things that complicate an easy sale of that lien so um, the newer tax titles I don't get those problems with because we're a little bit more ahead of it but with these old old ones these are the old tough tax title problems and they just this is just one of the ways. The other way that we can handle it, as I was saying before, is that we do petition. These are not saleable liens. The, I, nobody would buy these. They're too old, they're too complicated. Um, they're too unsaleable. Um, but normally, I would then take these uh, tax titles and I would petition the land court to foreclose. And it's just a question of whether you foreclose now or foreclose later. So because of complications, the age of the liens and the fact that you believe that the, the, the dollar amount of the lien is comparatively to the value of the property, a number that somebody would not have incentive to purchase this lien at auction, right? Because yes. if somebody's going to buy a lien from a town, the idea is obviously for them to be able to make some money, right? right? So they probably can't buy a $154,000 lien on this piece of land, in your opinion, yeah. flip and sell it, yeah. it, it and make a profit and yeah. so that leaves the town with the option of basically pursuing uh foreclosure in court correct and this is effectively just skipping the court process and Correct. asking it under a cooperative 
uh, auspices where the owner is just going to deed the land to the town. Right. Is that right? That is correct. Right. Yeah. And these lots are not next to each other. No. Uh, the the balsam and um, crab apple those are in the same development, but they are not street over. near each other. They're in the same area. Can this person? So uh, is this person doing any <coughs> existing projects right now in our town? And or could they do projects if they uh, wanted to? The owner of these two would be prohibited right now from getting a permit. Okay. Right. I did. Um, I will say. Um, that this person has been doing some business in town and because it was an old, old tax lien, I couldn't figure out why he had never been prohibited before from getting permits. Um, so when the name came up, I didn't, I didn't, I, I couldn't, I didn't have enough uh, uh, background. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it at that time. But now, now I do. Right. But now I do. And, and so now we have to resolve it one way or the other, and this person would not be eligible to get a permit in town. Right. Uh, if they did future projects in this town. So I, I guess the angle that I'm getting oh, at oh. With, with Mr. King as well is that if this person did a, or this entity, did this massive project, there are two pieces that turned out to not uh, pan out in this case for whatever reasons, and then the town takes them off the hands, we forgive the debt, boom, they do another project, and then they're making money on that new project yeah. that I feel as if I would say, we're not here to pick up the scraps that didn't work out. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm probably using simpler words than may be appropriate. No, but I understand but, what but you're getting at. the context of the situation. I the do. town sorely needs resources and revenue. Yeah. And what, the last thing I'd like to do is to set a precedent where we take what didn't work out and then you can start again fresh. Right. Is there a mechanism whereby we can get those monies back from somebody in this particular instance? Not that I'm aware of. I would have to dig deeper, mm -hmm. but I don't believe because there because it's a legal mechanism, and because we're allowing it, the the he's he has satisfied his debt, be, you know, through the mechanism of deed in lieu of foreclosure. So um, I don't think we could hold that against him, mm -hmm. and I don't think that there's another way that we could recoup those losses. So I would, but I would. I would look deeper into that. I would appreciate that. If there is some mechanism whereby the town could get some type of agreement, perhaps mm -hmm. a mutual agreement, mm -hmm. if we are both entering into this willingly, mm -hmm. that says should there be another project that generates profits that this yes. person would like or this okay. entity would like to um, endeavor in our town, yep. uh, then we would like the, some mutually agreed amount of compensation for essentially what we are taking on. Okay. In, in a sense. Because I believe now we're responsible for this if we assume these parcels, as we would on any town-owned property. That's right. Uh, so uh, from that perspective, I, I just think that might be a nice conversation if we can. I can look into that and see if there's some way that we can tie it into some future project or something. And it's your, it's your assessment that these are not buildable lots? or Not mine, no. As a matter of fact, the assessor has said that they, they're being assessed as buildable lots. lots. But I do know that one of them is wet and I don't, I don't know about the other one. I'm not sure what about the other one. Can we build on half acre lots? Because these are. It looks like the uh, lots around it are zoned. My next zoned. question was, yeah. Uh, the lots around it are very similar in size. So I'm assuming the subdivision was zoned at that. The property to the right and to the left of one of these that I just looked up were both at half an acre. Yeah. Uh, that What's the 21. downside to us doing nothing? Just letting it sit. Uh, we'd have we'd have to spend more money um, to get the same result. In in. It, but why would we have to do anything? Just plain devil's advocate. If we just didn't do anything and let this sit there as a, an outstanding bill forever, um, is there a downside to that for us? I mean, I could, I could see an upside if we could sell it and make the money back on it, but I, I also have the same concerns about you could, letting people think that this is... You could, and, and that's essentially what has been happening over the past, whatever, 20 years. You know, that, 
is essentially what's happening. And you just roll with tax title, you take a property in tax title one year, and then every year you take the, that year's taxes and you just roll it into it and you keep rolling it into it. And we could continue doing that. I personally believe that's not what a treasurer should do. <laughs> you know, you should because it's still in their name and it's making an, um, an unworkable situation even more unworkable as you go along. Um, I don't think that that's proper, but it is what has been done. So our ordinary policies are if somebody owes money, they don't get building permits, but that has Correct. not happened in this case. Correct. And we can't start doing it now? Uh, no, I will now. Yeah. Yeah. I have to now. I was reluctant to before because I didn't know the backstory, and I couldn't figure out why this person who had been in tax title for 20 years and who has done quite a bit of business in town uh, hasn't ever had his uh, permits not approved. Is there so ongoing said, projects right now? Um, I believe there is, yeah. Wouldn't that incentivize the payment of this if you couldn't get any more permits? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Why don't, do, you, do you want to hold off on this and take it up at our next meeting? Think about this a little bit more? I have a problem with it. Okay. Uh, despite Linda's uh, efforts. No, I, un I understand from, your, from the treasurer's perspective, certainly yep. it makes sense. Yep, and, very much uh, so. I agree. But I think, I think we want to think about this a little bit more. Okay. So all three of them are just, just the last two that we're talking about? I think the last two are separate from that in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first one has an outstanding balance of $3,500 and is, what did you say, 1,200 square feet? Yep, 1,242 so square feet. Sliver. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do uh, that. The second and third one of those three. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So I can um, see if there is some mechanism by which we, we can, if it were deeded to the town, whether or not we could make some sort of a, a deal. Um, but I will also reach out to the uh, the owner's attorney um, through our tax title attorney and see if make sure that they understand that the the permits can't be issued anymore because they won't be mm -hmm. um, and then see if there's something that we can maybe inspire from that mm -hmm. angle I, I guess yeah in the the further commentary I would add it appears that this has gone on as you mentioned for all these years, years. and there's been projects that have happened subsequent to mm -hmm. these and yet there has been no schedule of payments, even partial payments, mm -hmm. even a payment plan. It, yes. it, I'm asking, not telling. So if that's the case, then that to me even adds another, lends another color to this conversation. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's good enough. Okay, so if um, somebody would like to make a motion to include and recommend Article 18 only. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. And we're just going to table the other two till our next meeting. Okay. Uh, Chuck. Well, Linda, thank you so much well, thank for you. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. Thank you. Us at the details. <clears throat> All right. Um, so that is it on the warrants. Uh, next is general minutes dated January 28th. I gave them a read and was okay. Does anybody need time to read? No, I, I looked at them as well. Um, if that's the case, then I make a motion to accept the general minutes dated January 28th of 2019 as Second. presented. That's Tom and Chuck. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, public participation. Um, town administrator notes. Uh, just a couple of notes. Um, tomorrow night we'll be having uh, a community information session uh, relating to the five corners district improvement financing program and district um, more eloquently known as the five corners diff uh, that'll be at seven o'clock at the vfw uh, we've invited the folks in that district in uh, we'll have another uh, info session i believe on april 4th uh, as well as having that proposal reviewed uh, uh, more uh, with finance committee and the selectmen as part of the annual town meeting warrant process um, I believe that's going to be filmed by ECAT, so folks who can't go uh, can, can watch it, uh, and uh, we'll keep moving that along. Say tomorrow we'll be on ECAT? 
I don't know when it will be on ECAT. Um, the meeting is tomorrow, but I, I don't know how long it takes for them to, uh, especially at a remote site, um, how what the delay is in uploading it, but I'm sure it's as quick as it can do. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, this is a public meeting? Even it's though a public it's meeting. It's, it's not a board of selectmen meeting. It's not a board meeting, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's a, a public information session being put on by the planning department that I'll be attending. And why did they have it there? We wanted it to be uh, proximate to the district that we're talking about. The Five Corners diff is obviously, a, you, there's, there are implications for the entire community, but there's some very, very distinct uh, implications uh, for that area of town, and this is a, a group of folks we've been engaged with for uh, quite some time. Last September, you may recall, we had the charrette uh, uh, down on that end of town as well um, to get out of town hall, so to speak. We're trying to have it closer to the district and That's right. in a big enough venue that could hold mm -hmm. um, a good, good sized group of people. Yes, we're trying to accommodate. Okay, excellent. We'll have and cookies. What time does that start, Connor? Uh, seven o'clock tomorrow. Uh, and then just another note, I, I mentioned this when I submitted a personnel plan uh, last fall, but that may seem like a, a distant memory. Um, every five years, the town is required by bylaw to do a uh, non-union uh, personnel wage classification request. Uh, that is uh, something that we have not done. Uh, that project has not been done since 2014 and 15, so we're actually underway with that now. It's a relatively small project, um, but the Human Resources Board uh, at their meeting Tuesday after the most recent selectmen's meeting approved a proposed uh, plan of work uh, for uh, a consultant's uh, contract uh, with my office to get that uh, work underway uh, that just basically takes a look at internal and external equity for the classification for our non-union employees, which is obviously a very tiny group compared to the uh, entire town organization, but is nonetheless important. And I just wanted to make a note of that, um, that we're moving forward with that. So. Any selectman notes? Uh, I have one. Uh, Craig and I had the good fortune to attend the early elementary school um, discussion over the weekend. I uh, found it very informative. Uh, there was uh, probably our best turnout yet, uh, which was great. There were a lot of questions that were asked. I thought that um, um, the chair, Jane Martin, uh, I thought that Dr. Cabral, and I thought that the um, teams that we had hired, the companies that we had hired in the process, did an excellent job of walking through our project update. Uh, they took the time to answer all of the questions that the community had. Um, there, again, there seemed to be really good community engagement, which is heartening. I think this is a very big and important project for the town. So to get people's feedback on it was really good to see. Uh, and um, it was really, again, a, a nice thing to see. I hope it gains momentum and community engagement as we progress through the process. Craig, I don't know. I thought, thought I thought that the, uh, the the project manager and the architects have done a terrific job. I, I was very impressed with the ideas that they have going forward, showing us the examples of other schools they've already done, um, and the creativity. Um, I, I just was very impressed with them. And this is the second one that that, that Tom and I have gone to, and and as Tom said, it, it we had about five times as many people this time as we did the first time, uh, and we're hoping that the next one that we have in April there'll be even larger turnout um, and uh, but it's it's the website is there um, so that you can go on the website it's uh, easton eeS project dot com um, and um, I, I welcome input from the community and I hope that everybody will take the opportunity to learn more about it um, I don't have the exact date but it, there I'm is trying that. to look for it and I can't find yeah, it. I just I couldn't hop on <laughs> yeah I thought they had um, April maybe I'm wrong maybe it was no, no I, it I, is I, April I believe April 11th you're right is it April 11th? I was going to go with the 10th. Oh, boy. Um, I don't want to guess at the date. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Let's ask people to look at the website, and, um, and that will have the date for the next meeting. Excellent. All right. Great. That's good. I'm glad there was a lot of participation in that. Yep. Great. OK. And um, press notes? OK. Well, with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Craig, Craig and Chuck, all in favor? Unanimous. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.